In the small, secluded town of Ravenwood, an abandoned mansion stood at the edge of the forest. The locals called it Hollow House, a name that evoked the eerie emptiness that seemed to seep from its very walls. No one had lived there for decades, and those who dared venture close spoke of unsettling noises and ghostly figures glimpsed through the shattered windows. One rainy evening, a group of friends, Mark, Sarah, and David, decided to explore Hollow House. They were thrill-seekers, always chasing the next adrenaline rush, and the mansion's sinister reputation drew them in like moths to a flame. Armed with flashlights and nervous laughter, they pushed open the creaking front door. The air inside was musty and thick, the smell of decay almost palpable. As they stepped into the foyer, their footsteps echoed through the empty halls. Did you hear that? Sarah whispered, her voice trembling. David rolled his eyes. It's just the wind. This place is falling apart. But Mark, who had been listening intently, nodded. It sounded like whispering. They pressed on, moving from room to room. The mansion was a labyrinth of dust-covered furniture, cobwebs, and faded wallpaper. Each step seemed to amplify the sense of foreboding that hung in the air. They reached the grand staircase, its once opulent banister now rotted and broken. Let's go upstairs, Mark suggested, his curiosity overpowering his fear. As they climbed the stairs, the whispering grew louder, more distinct. It was a low, murmuring chant, almost hypnotic in its repetition. They exchanged uneasy glances but continued, driven by a mix of bravado and curiosity. At the top of the stairs, they found a long hallway lined with closed doors. The whispering seemed to come from behind one of them, drawing them forward like a siren's call. They stopped in front of a door at the end of the hall, its paint peeling and cracked. Open it, David urged, his voice barely a whisper. Mark reached out and turned the knob. The door swung open with a groan, revealing a dark room. Their flashlights flickered as they stepped inside, casting long, eerie shadows on the walls. The whispering was deafening now, a cacophony of voices that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere. In the center of the room stood an old, ornate mirror, its surface tarnished and grimy. As they approached, the whispers stopped abruptly, plunging the room into an oppressive silence. Sarah gasped. Look at the mirror! They turned their flashlights on the mirror. Reflected in its surface were not their own faces, but those of strangers. Pale, hollow-eyed figures with mouths frozen in silent screams. The reflection of the room was different, too. It was pristine, untouched by time and decay. What's happening? David's voice was barely audible, his bravado gone. Suddenly, the figures in the mirror moved, their mouths opening and closing in silent whispers. One by one, they reached out, their hands pressing against the glass as if trying to break through. The air grew colder, the sense of dread overwhelming. Let's get out of here! Mark shouted, turning to run. But as they moved, the mirror's surface rippled like water, and cold, ghostly hands shot out, grabbing at them. They screamed, fighting to break free, but the hands were relentless, pulling them towards the mirror. With a final desperate scream, they were dragged into the mirror, their bodies disappearing into the dark, reflective surface. The room was silent once more, the whispering gone. The mirror stood undisturbed, its surface smooth and reflective, showing only the empty room. The next morning, the townsfolk found the front door of Hollow House wide open. Inside, there was no sign of the three friends, only a dusty, abandoned mansion and an old, ornate mirror that seemed to whisper when no one was looking. 